Hi guys, this is Echo. During one of the last ham fest of last year, I took a, uh, a space too and was trying to sell some things. And I saw this um, Emerson 1946 radio that another vendor had. And I thought, just that's a cute little radio. You still have that by the end of the, the day. We're going to talk. I think he was asking 30 or 40 bucks, something like that. We talked about it for a while, and uh, I landed up getting it for 18 bucks. Okay, I brought it home, but I had a few projects at the time, so I didn't know how soon I was going to start working on it. But I did get a schematic, and, and it had a parts list on it as well. Let me go ahead and order the capacitors. And then also, I, uh, I took the chassis out of the cabinet, and I tested the tubes to see if I needed to get a few tubes as well. Okay, so I did that and I put the chassis out on the side of my shop. Over time, you know, I had a lot of other projects to do and you know, before I know it's been a couple months and I haven't done anything with it, but unfortunately I had moved things around two or three times in the basement there for one reason or another. And I know that that radio, that chassis, fell off a shelf. So I was so worried. I mean, it wasn't that far. Maybe it fell two feet at the most. But, you know, I didn't know if it broke anything or not. But I just put it back on the shelf and let it go. Okay, well, anyways, starting a couple days ago, <clears throat> I thought it's about time to take a look at this thing. So I pulled out the chassis, and I started looking at it, and... Darn enough, look at that where the pointer is for doing the tuning. That had broken off somewhere, probably when that thing had fallen off of the shelf. I didn't notice that that was broken at the time. and I looked around where I thought I had it, but I didn't see anything there. And, oh, rats, I got a broken pointer. And then I looked a little off to the side, and I see uh, I could also put a pretty big tear into the speaker. Oh, man. So that's that was my problem. I was not being careful enough with this kind of stuff and I should have put that right back into the cabinet if I wasn't going to work on it right away. But unfortunately, that's where I'm at. So, okay, well let's see what we got. So I looked inside uh, the electronics in there and saw the what kind of capacitors am I going to have to work on and I thought, well, let me just go ahead and start going on it. So the ones I was going to work on first was there was there was two electrolytics in there. And you know what? All of a sudden it had two 20 microfarad capacitors in that can. And my schematic showed it as one with 30 microfarads and one with 50 microfarads. All right, now sometimes I've seen where you've had a, a repairman in the past had replaced the electrolytics and maybe put in the closest thingy in there but this looked like it was the original ones that came in and now I'm a little worried because you know two 20 microfarads in inside the cabinet and the schematics telling me to put one on the 30 and the 50 which one am I supposed to use I've had the same situation before and I went with whatever the schematic had but on this one, when I look at that schematic, it shows quite a few different models of that Emerson radio on there. At first I thought it meant they, they had all those different models that maybe it looked different from a cabinet standpoint, but the chassis was the same. But apparently it's they were close. They were all in that close range, and this wasn't exactly what every model might have. Ah, okay, so what am I going to do now? Well, I had these extra 30 microfarads, and the ones that were already in the cabinet were 20 microfarads. I thought, you know, that's close enough, I think. I think it'll work okay. I don't want to went in order. I had no 20 microfarads, so I'm going to try the 230s. It also had a capacitor that I didn't show in the schematic at all. On the capacitor, it showed a 0 0.0002 microfarad. Well, I didn't have any of those. I did have a 0 0.0005. So I decided to use that one and see how things work. 
If I look uh, inside the chassis though, um, all the rest of the capacitors were in there. did show the correct value of those capacitors. So I was able to swap the other five or six capacitors with new ones. Okay, so with that, all the capacitors have been changed. A couple of those ones that were close that I had. I thought, well, let's give it a shot. Let's try turning that thing on. Okay, it turned on. It sounded good. I actually picked up some pretty good stations working down in the basement with all those uh, fluorescent lights. So I said, okay, well, okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's see what we can do to get this thing back in shape. I had broken that pointer, but I had a couple old radios that I have used for other parts for the last year, and I haven't thrown those away, and I'm glad I didn't because one of them had a pointer that I could use. So I just took it and put a little extra glue on it so I could get that pointer to fit into the shaft of that Emerson, and that looked pretty good. And then I had this uh, big tear in the speaker, nail polish, um, put that where the tear was and let that dry. And that looked pretty good. All right, well, let's see what happens. So let's put it all back together into the cabinet. I uh, polished it pretty good with some plastic X. Uh, I think this looks pretty good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, close here in just a second. I'm going to take a few songs out of my AM transmitter and uh, we'll play a good song from uh, 1942. So uh, listen to it, tell me what you think. And for now, this is Zatko signing off.